G'day, and welcome back to the Department of Song and Armour's Research. Today, we're going to be talking about what's referred to in Australia as snake guns. Now, first of all, we do not condone the shooting of Australian native reptiles. That is outlawed in every state, first point and foremost. However, 410 shotguns in Australia are commonly referred to as snake guns because that was their purpose many years ago. So, let's take a look at my... Pedretti. Shotgun. Oh. Not much to look at, is it? No, I fixed it. So, this... Pedretti. Shotgun is made in Spain. Thus, I am not even going to attempt to pronounce it correctly. 410, double barrel, double hammers, double triggers. A lot of these snake guns, as we'll now refer to them, were actually mostly single barrels. However, occasionally, you come across little gems like this. This gun cost me all $250 at my local sports store. They're cheap, the ammunition's very expensive, but they are a lot of fun. And if it's not for the fun, why else would we be in the shooting sports? So, let's take a look at some of the features on this little shotgun. And uh, you can see just how big a piece of crap it is. Okay, so, some of the features of this Pedretti 410. First of all, the stock. The stock is cracked horribly. Uh, it has had an awful epoxy and bog repair job at some stage of its life, but it's still ticking. And let's face it, the recoil on a 410 isn't that spectacular anyway. Um, metallurgy, this looks like it's been heat treated in someone's campfire, but it's running. I can't tell whether the pins that hold the action together are actually from the factory or they've been replaced or that it's just made by a lazy, sleepy Spaniard. Possibly a combination of all three. So, the mechanics of this little beauty. To open the action, we have this giant lever on the side, normally actuated by the thumb. Breaks open like any other shotgun that's out there. I like side-by-sides. I started off shooting with a uh, SKB side-by-side -side that was my mother's. I still have it to this day. So, side-by-sides speak to me. Uh, there are no ejectors. There is this rather weak extractor mechanism that uh, actuates as you open the gun. Normally, it then just gets in the way when you try and close the gun. To fire, you have to cock each individual hammer. Uh, these are significantly worn, um, as will be soon demonstrated. The firing pins, they may have a spring in there. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think they'd have a floating firing pin. And then you select whichever trigger for the barrel that you intend to fire. This throws a few people who are used to single trigger under and overs. So once you've done your shots, open her up, extract, and manually pluck out your cartridges. Now, the configuration you saw it when I first brought up from under the table uh, is what's known as a poacher's gun. Many of these little 410s are referred to as poacher's guns uh, because they were designed back in ye olde times. If you fold it down like that, to be easily hidden in backpacks or waders or Wellington boots, etc., uh, for you to go and poach on your lord's land without permission. Interesting history note, we do not contone poaching in any way, shape or form. So, sighting arrangement, just a simple brass bead up the front. Despite the rather spindly stock and the cutout that has to fit over the trigger guard, the short dimensions, this gun actually fits me. As we all know with shotguns, it's all about how well it fits you, determines how well you can shoot it. Now, pitfalls of, pitfalls of the 410. The ammunition, it's expensive, about $23 a box for the really cheap stuff. Uh, Three inch shells have the same powder charge as two and a half inch shells, which are a little bit shorter. Just 
the shot weight changes. So you have more lead in front of the same charge, thus you lose some velocity. Uh, a lot of them are cardboard wads. They're not spectacular. You don't get as many pallets as your you know, equivalent of 12 gauge, but you're also getting a lot less recoil. Range, velocity, usually about the same as your 12 gauge round. However, you've got less pallets to do it with. So you end up with a smaller, tighter pattern, uh, which may or may not be more dense, depending on how well your gun is choked. Most of these are choked barrels in 410s. You can get slugs for them. They're roughly equivalent to a, a rather wimpy 243 cartridge in terms of uh, stopping power. Uh, I wouldn't recommend chasing anything down with a, 12, a 410 slug. But if you're just out there teaching people to shoot, popping the odd rabbit on the back of your dairy farm, whatever the case may be, or if you really want to challenge yourself on a trap or uh, down the line range, these are a lot of fun. Uh, we've tried these on the steel pepper poppers. Um, number fours don't have the energy to knock over a steel popper, but again, it's fun to try anyway. So that wraps it up for the Pedretti. 410. Hope you've liked what you've seen here. Cheap guns can be fun guns, just don't expect them to be good guns. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you again sometime soon. Petretti.